Welcome to the Coastal Kitchen. I'm Karen Meshures and today we're going to be featuring butternut squash soup, mandarin orange salad, pumpkin roll for dessert, and wonderful popovers to have with our soup. Wow, you've got all those wonderful smells from your Thanksgiving dinner still in your head. Think about a dinner to serve for yourself and guests that's very easy and delicious as well. We're going to start out by showing you the things we've got already chopped up. We've got a butternut squash which is about uh, three pounds of, of squash. It's been peeled, seeded, and diced up. We've got one potato, three carrots diced, celery, onions, garlic and honey just to give it a little sweetness. We're going to start by taking two tablespoons of butter and putting our heat on medium and we're going to let that butter melt really fast and into that butter once it's melted we're going to put the garlic and the onion. We're going to let that brown for about five minutes and we're using what other people call the trinity which is celery, onions and carrots and the basis for this soup is all in the wonderful flavors that we have here. All right, let's see. Nice and done. Getting all melted and we're going to throw those onions in the pot. A lot of people like this soup with the thick consistency um, that's usual. I like it a little bit thinner because I like it more like a, a soup. I'll show you how we're going to do that shortly. All right. Onions and garlic are in and the pot's starting to sizzle. We're going to let that go for about five minutes. Stir it occasionally because you don't want anything in the bottom of the pot to get too brown or burn. I don't know about you, but I love the smell of onions and garlic. All right, that's just about ready. What we're going to do now is we're going to put in our celery and our carrots. And we're going to let that cook about another five minutes, stirring occasionally. This is a great meal to have on hand for unexpected company. You can pop it out of the freezer and have it ready in about 30 minutes and you get to enjoy the time with your visitors. Now it's time for the rest of our ingredients. Let's get our potatoes. We're going to pop those right in. And I like to get all my vegetables in before I add my chicken broth and my vegetable broth so there's no splashing. All right. Now our vegetable broth and our chicken broth and I've got it mixed together. And we're going to bring this up to a boil and then we're going to let it simmer for about 40 minutes. Okay. We've got some crushed thyme leaves, dried thyme. I'm going to put that in and I've got a half a cup of honey. And if you lightly grease your container that you've got honey or molasses in, it will let it all come out very easily. Okay, let's give this a nice stir and we're going to bring it to a boil and then we're going to let it just simmer. 
Now the one thing about butternut squash is when you get ready, this is a butternut squash, um, you can use a vegetable peeler and you better have a really sharp knife because it's a very hard cut. You want to make sure you peel it and seed it, then cube it. Okay, while that's getting ready to boil, let's do our salad. I've got some mixed greens here and this is a very simple salad that really complements the soup. We're going to put in mandarin oranges and those mandarin oranges have been drained. We're going to put in half a cup of pecans. If you'd like, you can add raisins too. Sometimes I add raisins just for the, the little bit of texture difference. I've got half of a red onion. And what I'm going to do is just gently toss. We're going to make a citrus salad dressing to go on top. It's going to sit in the refrigerator for about an hour so the flavors can all come together and make this salad as scrumptious as it looks. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side and we're going to start with our salad dressing. Lovely jar. Just have a tight, tight fitting lid on your jar and we're going to put in some orange juice. some balsamic vinegar, a little bit of honey, some pepper, fresh ground pepper, and we're going to put a tablespoon of your favorite Dijon type mustard. just all in the jar all at the same time. Put this lid right on and start shaking. It's a very light dressing and it really enhances the flavor of the mandarin oranges. Okay, so we've got our dressing ready. We've got our salad ready. We're going to take a short break so you can hear from our sponsor and we'll be back in a few minutes to make our popovers and our pumpkin roll. ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Food Lion, your neighborhood grocery store. Since 1957, Food Lion has been offering the highest quality products at low prices with great service. Swing by your local Food Lion today to find all the ingredients needed to make the meal featured on this week's show. Welcome back. Let's make some popovers. You know, popovers are a lovely, savory um, bread. And if you'd like, you can add all sorts of herbs, different herbs, and even cheese. You can uh, make it the way that you like it. What I'm doing is I'm buttering my popover tin. You don't have to have a popover tin. You can use custard cups or a muffin tin. Anything that you have that uh, will hold the batter. Our batter is a very simple batter, but you need to make sure that we have room temperature milk and room temperature eggs. We've got three extra large. And I'm going to give that a little whisk just to get those eggs broken up. We're going to put in our flour, all-purpose flour. Want to get that all mixed up. A little bit of salt. And you know, all of our recipes you can find at atmctv.com or you can go onto Facebook. Let's put some melted butter in. And we're just going to give it a nice whisk. And I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. There are three secrets to making popovers. And one of them is to put your pan into the oven and get it hot, 425 degrees, for about two minutes before you put the batter in. The second 
tip is to make sure that you only fill the cups half full. And the third is don't peak once you put them in the oven. So let's take a look at our soup, put a little bit of salt and pepper in there uh, to season it. It's done a wonderful job of boiling. We've got it on simmer and it smells absolutely wonderful. Put some pepper in there. And this is something you can season to taste. Give it a nice stir. Those vegetables are getting tender and shortly we'll have soup. Let's start on our pumpkin roll. Pumpkin roll is really quick and easy. A lot of people haven't tried it because you get a little intimidated with rolling up um, your cake, but it's very, very simple. We're going to take a cup of granulated sugar and a cup of flour. We're going to take baking powder and cinnamon. One cup of pumpkin. Now, don't get the pumpkin pie in the can. Just get the pureed pumpkin. We've got three extra large eggs. All that goes in. And we're going to start our mixer. All right, we're going to mix this up real good. I'm going to let it sit for just a second. We'll scrape down the pan, mix it back up, and get it ready to go. In the meantime, I've got to get this out of the oven real fast. And get ready to start pouring. Give it another good whisk. And I'm going to get a small ladle, so I'm not quite so messy. And it's going to take about two of these for me to get it halfway full. Let's get that last little bit in there. And we're going to get that in the oven for 30 minutes. Now this is at 425. And don't forget that your pan's hot after you put your batter in. All right. Remember, no peaking. Okay. Let's take another stir to our soup and we're going to get right back to that pumpkin roll. Mm. Okay, we've let our batter sit for just a minute. I'm going to do one more little whisk. And I'm going to put this right over there. I have a jelly roll pan that I have used uh, greased. I have put wax paper on top of that and then lightly greased the top of the wax paper. You want to do that because that's imperative to make it roll correctly so you can get it out of the pan without any problems. All right, let's get that right in. Two very dear friends of mine shared this recipe with me. So I call it Mary Alice's Pumpkin Roll. So thank you, Mary, and thank you, Alice. All right, want to get all that in here. And this is going to bake for about 18 minutes. 375 degree oven, spread it all out. And remember, everybody's oven bakes a little bit differently. So you may have to practice one or two times to get the exact minutes that are good for you. 
Okay. All right, I got it smoothed out. The one thing I like to do is I like to give it a good shake. I'm going to smooth that into that corner just a little bit more. I want it as even as can be when it goes in the oven. All right, here it goes. And in 18 minutes, we'll get it out of the oven and be ready to start on our filling. Let's take a short break right now so you can hear from our sponsors. ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Holden Brothers Farm Market in Shalote for supplying the fresh produce on this week's show. For over 25 years, the Holden Brothers Farm Market has specialized in the freshest locally grown produce on their 250 acres in Shalote. Swing by their indoor market located near Mile Marker 10 on Highway 17 or check them out online at HoldenBrothersFarmMarket.com. Welcome back. Now it's multitasking time. I think our popovers are just about done, so I'm going to take those out of the oven right now. I've already taken out my cake. Ooh, the steam goes to show that they're nice and done. Let's bring these over here. Let them sit for just a second. Shut that oven. I've turned off my soup. I'm letting it cool because we have to puree that in just a minute. When you get your popovers out of the oven, they're going to be hot. So I want you to just take a sharp knife, pierce the side. We want the steam to come out. So they don't get moist inside. They'll be moist enough inside. We don't want them to go uh, and fall. We want the crust to be crispy. Don't they look wonderful? Oh, they smell so good. Let that steam out and whew, nice and hot. Now I'm going to move this over just a touch. Get the rest of them out. And these will be really delicious with some butter on top. You can even Put a little soup in the middle and it's going to be great. Okay, these are going into my basket to keep warm. Okay, the popovers. Now, let's go to our soup. I've got my processor and I'm going to get my new little doodahs here that keep me from burning my fingers and I don't have to use a pot holder on the, on the pan. I've got a big bowl that I'm going to put my pureed soup into. So let's start. You're going to take about a third of the soup and transfer it over to your food processor and we're going to put the top on real fast and make some noise. Want this to puree, get all those vegetables integrated into one beautiful flavor. Okay, let's take a look. Right. Do that just a minute more. And we're going to finish this up with about one third of the mixture at a time. And I'm going to pour it into this bowl. See how beautiful that looks? And 
and get it ready for the next set. Just a little bit messy, but that's okay. Okay, it looks like everything's blended. We've got, took about four batches. We're gonna pour this into our big bowl. Let's get everything out of there. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right back in the pot that we took it out of, okay? So pour this all right back into the pot. Watch the steam. And it looks wonderful. Now this is where if you'd like to thin it up a little bit, you can. I like mine just a little bit thinner, but I'm gonna leave it this way today. I think everybody needs to taste it the way it's supposed to be. Okay, we're gonna put this back on the stove for just a minute. I'm gonna put it on simmer. Rinse my hands just a sec. I'm going to come over here to my pumpkin roll. Now this has been sitting for about five minutes. I'm gonna take some powdered sugar. I'm using what I call a flour sack paper towel. And I'm gonna take my cake right out of the pan, turn it over and lay it right on that powdered sugar. I'm gonna take my edges right off. Don't want it to be too cool. We're gonna tear this paper right like that. And just use your hand as a guide to keep your cake down. And sometimes you'll get a little sticky piece. Oh, that cinnamon pumpkin smells wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And what we're going to do right now is fold our towel over this end and we are going to slowly make a roll. Just want to roll it nice and slow. I'm gonna fold the ends up. This is gonna go into the fridge for about five minutes. Want it to set so it's nice and round. Put that right in there next to our salad. And we're going to make the filling, which is a cream cheese filling. And I've got a block of cream cheese that's room temperature. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix that up just a little bit before I add my powdered sugar. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of parquet. And as I said, this recipe comes from some friends um, and they suggest using parquet in this filling mixture. All right, powdered sugar. And I'm gonna stop this for just a sec because we're gonna put in three quarters of a table, three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla. All right. When I'm baking, I try to measure just the way it says because it always comes out better. Don't forget to visit us on Facebook, and if you have any questions or would like any um, responses to anything that I can help you with, please don't hesitate to give us a, a 
Twitter or a tweet or go on to our Facebook page. All right, that looks perfect. I'm just gonna add one little pinch of salt because I believe that if you have sweet, you need just a tiny bit of salt. It intensifies that flavor of the cream cheese. Smell of vanilla is so inviting. Okay, this is all done. I'm gonna turn this off and we're going to clean up a little bit, get everything um, ready for you to see and we'll finish our pumpkin roll when we come back. ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Food Lion, your neighborhood grocery store. Swing by your local Food Lion today to find all the ingredients needed to make the meal featured on this week's show. All right, we've got one more thing to do to complete our dessert. I've taken my roll out of the refrigerator and now it's time to unroll. Okay. Just leave it as it sits. Once you take the filling, put it right in the center. Let's get all of that in there. And when you spread your filling, I've got an offset spatula and I like to use that because it spreads quick. Total make time on this is about uh, 30 minutes at the most. Um, spread out and when you spread your filling, spread a little thicker on this inside edge. because you want that to have a nice swirl effect when you cut it. And we're gonna get this all spread out. And you're gonna roll it just like you did before, but without the towel. Come all the way out to the edges. And I like to use it all, so let's get that right back out there. Spread a little more in that corner. Okay, when you roll, just make sure that you have most of your hand supporting your cake. Nice and tight roll. You can see it's picked up the cream cheese all the way through. We've got powdered sugar on top. Give it a little squeeze and we're going to put it right over here on our saran wrap. And if you put this in the freezer, not only do you want to put it in saran wrap, you also want to put it in tin foil. Wrap it up real good so no moisture gets inside. Okay, perfect cake. Wrap it up quick so it gets nice and formed. Goes right in the fridge. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one over here and let's take a look at what we've done today. I have butternut squash soup, mandarin orange salad, popovers and a pumpkin roll. Now with your soup, you might want to take just a dollop of sour cream, just a tiny dollop right on top. I like a little cayenne pepper, so I'm gonna put just a smidgen of cayenne pepper on. You can also use spring onions or chives on top. It's all in how you like it. So remember, check us out at atmc.com tv.com and Facebook The Coastal Kitchen. Have a wonderful holiday season and we'll see you next time on The Coastal Kitchen.